Good morning, everybody. I hope today finds you well, as I always do. Um, I've been praying for you, some of you by name, and, and some of you just merely um, in general. But, you know, I do pray every single day. I pray every single week. Um, I pray for these videos. I pray for uh, who is able to watch these videos. You are loved. You are prayed for. And even though some of us I know have um, big distances apart, and some of us are parted because of uh, COVID and in and, and other instances, I still think about you. I still love you and I still pray for you. So with this being said, let's go ahead and get into our word today. Today we're talking about a relationship. Okay. And this is that relationship between Jesus and his disciples. Now, speaking of relationships, I want to encourage you, if you're watching, um, feel free to ask questions during the live feed and I will do my best to answer them. I'll do my best to acknowledge them. Uh, many of you have seen that if you pop on, there's a little wave thing. I'll wave at you. The reason I do this is, you know, this is all about relationship. Even though this is a screen and I'm presenting the word of God to you, I'm doing this not because Brian gets something out of this. You know, um, some of these videos get big marks and some of them don't. I do this because I love you. I do this because uh, I have a vertical relationship with Jesus, and I want to have a horizontal relationship with you. We need to make sure we are getting those relationships in order. This is important and it's vital. Uh, this is all about relationship. Part of looking like Jesus is knowing him. At the end of all things, when Jesus um, is judging, one of the things he will tell people, he will look at them after they said, we've been in church We've prophesied and we've performed miracles and we've cast out demons in your name. He said, I'll look at them and say, I never knew you. I was never intimate with you. I had no knowledge of you. And so I hope that when we look at these verses, when we look at how Jesus interacted with his disciples, from the very beginning, it was always about the relationship. So, first John, or sorry, John 1, verse 35. It says, again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. I know we read this last week, but, um, you know, these two lessons are going to overlap because, you know, it speaks of Jesus as the Lamb of God, but at the same time, it also speaks to the relationship he had. Um, you know, remember, um, Jesus had, when he was baptized, he came up out of the water and the skies opened up and, and God said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Spirit came and landed upon him like a dove. Um when we see these things, that's Jesus and his relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. When we look at this right here, this is Jesus and his relationship with others as he has that relationship with his Father. Jesus even said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we look at this. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples. John had a relationship with two of those disciples. Who were those disciples? Andrew and another disciple who we know by the writing is John himself. When he saw Jesus walking by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God! The two disciples heard him say this and followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and noticed them following, he asked them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? These two men, Andrew and John, by claiming Jesus as Rabbi, they're saying, we are asking you to teach us. They're establishing the relationship. Teacher, our teacher, our master, our uh, 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 our, our, our guide. Where are you staying? And they did this to create a relationship. And Jesus could have said, you know, I don't have time for you right now. But instead, this is what happens. Come and you will see, he replied. So they went and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him that day. It was about 10 in the morning. So they stayed with him for a whole day. We don't know what they talked about. Andrew and John kept that to themselves. It was never really written about in the other scriptures. We don't know what they had said. But Jesus spent the day 
talking to his disciples. Jesus was in communication with and relationship with these first disciples, John and Andrew. Jesus was invited by them to be their teacher. They said, Rabbi, where are you staying? And Jesus himself said, come and you will see where I am staying. Jesus invited them into his life. The invitation wasn't merely by them. They wouldn't have come had Jesus not known them. But as Jesus was passing by, John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And it intrigued them. They were drawn to him because John made a declaration about this Jewish Messiah. And the Messiah invited them, Come and stay with me. Now, we know that whatever they said, whatever that conversation was, had such a profound effect on them that they were changed by it. Here's what I mean. The next verse, verse 40. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard John and followed him. So Andrew and John, we know, were disciples of John the Baptist. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means anointed one. And he brought Simon to Jesus. When Jesus saw him, he said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which means rock. At one point later on, um, Jesus calls him Peter. He says, and you are Peter, which also is where the word Cephas comes from. It also means rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. When Jesus is naming Peter, he's doing something else there by saying, you are the rock. Jesus is again establishing a relationship. We've got to understand that Jesus took all of the law and all of the prophets and brought it into focus into two parts of one command. A scribe asked him, Master, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But he said the second is equal to it. That is what the word just like that we have translated. The second is just like it. The second is exactly like the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He says all of the law and the prophets hinge upon these two. Consider the cross for a minute. You know, I I talked about a vertical and a horizontal relationship. Let's take a look at, at the cross for a minute. Imagine this is a cross. It's a pretty bad cross, but... It'll work. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength is that vertical relationship up and down. Loving your neighbor as yourself is the left to right, the, the, the horizontal relationship. We love God, and because we love God, we then love those he created in his image, which is our neighbor, which is all people. And Jesus began calling his apostles calling his disciples, and having a relationship immediately with them. It is all about relationship. Relationship to God and relationship with one another. Jesus said the greatest commandment, the new commandment I give to you, at at John 15, we're going to look at this sometime down the road, he says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. All the world will know you follow me by how you love each other. In other words, you cannot love Jesus without loving your neighbor. Why? Because your proximity to Jesus brings you into a love relationship with your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? Everyone. They will know we are disciples of Jesus Christ by how we love one another. Jesus never preached a message without following his own teachings. And that's what he's doing here. He immediately established a relationship. One more story, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. Verse 43, the next day, he decided to leave for Galilee. Jesus found Philip and told him, follow me. Those words, follow me. Many of us don't understand them, and I think many of us get it wrong. When Jesus is saying, follow me, he is saying, walk in my steps, become as I am. When Jesus tells you, when he tells me, follow me, he is saying, walk in my steps and do as I do. 
Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and so did the prophets. You see, Jesus had this profound effect in these relationships with these young men. Follow me. This is the one. Those are the responses. Whatever Jesus had in those conversations with those disciples, it convinced them that all the law and the prophets, that Moses, that, that the prophets, that the histories, that everything that was pointing to this one, this, this root of David, this seed of David, the son of David, was found in this man, Jesus Christ. And they knew so because of the relationship they had with him. Now, here's how Nathaniel responded. Not everybody follows this. He says, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and so did the prophets, Jesus the son of Joseph from Nazareth. And I love Nathaniel's response. He's honest. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel asked him. Come and see. You see, so this comes full circle. When Jesus told his disciples, Andrew and John, Come and see when they ask where he's staying. And Philip here is telling Nathaniel, and Nathaniel says, Anything, does anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip uses the same words that Jesus, come and you'll see. When people are looking for the hope that Christ gives us, my prayer is that our relationship with Jesus Christ will be connected through our relationship with them. And we too, can anything good come out of your faith in Jesus? That they see it in us and we may also say, come and you will see. The story doesn't end there though. Then Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and he said about him, here is a true Israelite, no deceit in him. You know, this is Jesus being funny. You know, Israelites, they're, like, they're, they're skeptical people. And what's more is he was, was using this. <laughs> he, was, he was giving his skepticism, but Jesus admired him for it. He built it up. He established a relationship again with Nathaniel. Here is a true Israelite. I know this man. This man has no deceit in him. Jesus, again, built a relationship with this disciple, Nathaniel. And Nathaniel asked, how do you know me? That intimate word, know. How is it you know so much about me? Nathaniel asked, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. In other words, Jesus discerned the conversation. He knew who Nathaniel was. He knew him intimately. It goes back to Psalm 139 where David says, Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know my heart. You know the deepest, most part of me. There's nothing I can do to hide from you. Jesus is saying this to Nathaniel. And I love how Nathaniel responds. Rabbi, teacher. Nathaniel replied, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Because of this little relationship. Because this Messiah, this rabbi, this teacher reached out to him and knew him personally. He loved him. He knew him. He was intimate with him. Jesus responded to him, Do you believe only because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? I almost imagine Jesus laughing at this at one point. (laughs) Incredible. Just because I said I saw you under a fig tree. That's amazing. He's lifting him up, but also at the same time, I I see a jovial mood. Jesus was human. He was fully God and yet fully man. (laughs) But, But what's great is he doesn't stop there. He goes, you'll see greater things than this. Then he said, I assure you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. All this comes from relationship. Now, Something else Jesus is doing here, and we can't miss this point. If you recall, Jacob was fleeing from his brother Esau. And he went and stopped, and he laid his head on a rock. And he had this vision of this ladder coming down from heaven. And upon this ladder, angels were going up and down into heaven. Jesus here is speaking. Jacob, who was renamed 
Israel saw the ladder and Jesus is saying, I am that ladder. And they all believed these things of him because he related to them. Let's think about how John opened up this letter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Jesus is the Word. He was there in the beginning. He was God, but he was also with God. Relationship. Then he says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus came down and became one of us. He related to us. And then we see all these things that began at the beginning of this chapter. He's meeting with people. He's coming in and he's establishing relationships and he's bringing disciples in and he knows each one of them and he's intimate with them all. Church, maybe we've stepped away from this for too long and need to get back. This is all about relationship. Relating to God the Father. And relating to all our brothers and sisters. It's all about relationship. If we love God, we will keep His commandments. If we love God, we will love our neighbors as ourselves. They're not mutually exclusive of each other. And so we need to follow Christ. We need to follow Jesus. We need to seek following Jesus. I pray for you. Let me know what you think. Comment in the video. Tell tell us what you think of this. Have a relationship with us. (laughs) Converse with us. Some of you do and we appreciate that. But, But let's make this group, even these videos, about relationship. With that being said, I want to let you know I love you. And I'm going to continue to pray for you. And I hope to see you again on Thursday. If you have any questions, if you have anything you want to say, go ahead and bring it up. I think we have a topic for Thursday already, but, you know, more questions asked, more videos will be done. That being said, God bless you. God keep you. And we will see you on Thursday.